So we can keep going on doing this, saying that variable item amount 1 is equal to 0 and variable item amount 2 equals to 0. But imagine you've got 70 items. Are you really going to want to write var item amount 3 equals 0 all the way up to 70? No, you do not. So there is a shortcut to this. And that shortcut is what we call for loops. Now, a for loop is basically something that will keep happening over and over and over again until you tell it to stop. So, say, okay, in this example, we have three items. We have potion, ether, and antidote. And we want to make the variables that we've just deleted there. The, uh, and one thing I should probably make sure of is that I've got the right uppercase letter there. Uh, one thing I should probably try to make clear of is that this is a very simple example, so it doesn't make too much difference here, but if you've got 70 items, for example, that can take ages, so we want to make a for loop. And the way that we do this is we have we have for, and then we have open a regular bracket, and now we have to create a new variable within the scope of this for loop, but this variable only exists within this for loop, and it's commonly known as i, so we can have i equals 1. That's the first value of i. Then we have to do a semicolon. And then the next thing we have to write is the condition. How long will this loop run until? So we'll say if i is less than or equal to, put in less than, then an equal to means less than or equal to, uh, 3, as it is in this case, so that means we'll run through it three times, and every time we want i to increase by one. Now you could do i equals i plus one, but a shortcut to doing that is i plus equals one. That's just a shortcut. And like with if statements, we have our squiggly brackets like that. So what this is saying is that here we have a loop where the value of i starts at one, it adds one, to the i variable every time, and it keeps working until the i variable is is no longer equal or less than or equal to 3. So now we can change that line into text to something very special. We Instead, what we can do is we can say variable item amount, and then in brackets i, equals zero. So now what that will do is it will take the i, this i here is referencing the i variable that's looping through here. So it will go, okay, i equals one, right? Variable item amount for, for, num for the first one in the list is equal to zero. And then, then add one to i, and then it's still less than or equal to three. And then we'll have variable item amount, uh, i is now 2, so make the second one also equal to 0. Now we can have, now because we've done that, add 1 to the i, it's still less than or equal to 3, the variable item amount 3 equals 0, and it and then it goes to the fourth one, oh, it's not in the scope of being less than 3 anymore, so then they end the loop. So say if we have 70 items, you can do that with up to 70, and then you've got 70 variables declared in just those two lines of text. Or code, should I say. Just those two lines of code, you have 70 variables declared, which is, quite frankly, amazing, if I do say so myself. And you could even put that into one line, I suppose, because it's got these squiggly brackets. Now there's many other things you can do with for loops. It doesn't have just to be to have to be with declaring arrays. You can have conditions in in there. For example, this is in the create um, command. So in the in the event of the item being created, so let's copy this and let's say you don't want any items go into our step command here 
Let's say you don't want any items, uh, any amount of items to go over 99. You want an item limit of 99. So you can have 99 portions, but you can't have over 99 portions. Or 99 ethers, and you can't have over any, any more than 99. So you want to put a limit on them. And again, we could just copy this loop here. And within the for statement, within the for loop, we can create an if statement. So if variable item amount of i is greater than 99, then create another pair of brackets within this, and then var item amount i equals 99, if I'll type properly. So I hope this is making sense. So now this is within the for loop saying that, okay, going through every value of i from 1 to 3, if the, if the amount of the first item is greater than 99, then make the item great, equal 99. And then it goes to number 2. If variable item amount, the second, 2, the second item amount is greater than 99, then make it equal to 99. And again, imagine if you have 70 items, it will go through this 70 times all in just a few lines of code. So, and you might also want to make it so that you can't have negative amounts of of items, so you'll want to say if the amount is also less than zero, then make it equal zero. And I imagine you, well, you should have other code later on as well, also to make sure that you can't use an item if you don't have any. But for now, this is basically just saying no matter what, the amount that you have can't extend these boundaries of any item because it's gone through the different arrays. Very, very handy. Very neat trick. I hope it's all making sense. I hope you're catching on. And... Feel free to ask questions if you don't understand.